Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Women of Worthy Network. Okay, y'all, I'm going to be very professional because y'all know how I feel about this lady. She's like a sister from another mister, okay? Mm. So I'm not going to fan out right now. I got to be professional. I have loved this woman when she came on the scene. And let me tell you what I loved about her. Her style, her fashion, her, she doesn't age, okay? This is what you're talking about, like age like wine, not spoiled milk, okay? Age like fine wine. So the Women Are Worthy Network, we would we have the opportunity to have a great conversation with Miss Tanika Foster Raymond. She's the epitome of strength of a woman, okay? When you're talking about what woman is strong, we all are strong, but this is the, this is my, she's my hero or shero because she's gone through a lot and she rises to the top just like cream, okay? Just like cream. So Tamika, she's a mother, an entrepreneur, a style icon, as I said. She's multi-talented. She's a multi-talented force with a career spanning two decades. The late child, she looked like she 21. They talking about two decades. She's made a name for herself and she's a trendsetter. She's a celebrity stylist. She's working with the legendary artists like Patti LaBelle, Shaka Khan, Aretha Franklin, and chart toppers like Jay-Z, Hove, as y'all know him, Usher, Mary J. Blige, and on and on and on. Her style for me is minimalistic and some, she pulls it off. I don't care what she put on, she pulls it off. And she doesn't know, and what I'm gonna say right now is she can now call the police and tell them to take the tail off of me because whenever she feels like someone's stalking her or watching her, that would be me, okay? I'm always finding out what she's doing. So without further ado, the Women Are Worthy Network, we are proud and honored to have Miss Tamika Raymond Foster. And I've been changing the name around because I just love Tamika Foster just rolls off the tongue. That's so excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me if I use and if you don't want me to use that, but it just rolls off the tongue. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for the warm introduction. That's so nice. Okay. Let's get to it because I'm getting some text asking questions, you know, to ask you some questions. So what, what makes What's the strength of a woman? What would you, what's your definition of that? The strength of a woman? I think it's the ability to, you know, remain resilient through, you know, life's various obstacles. Of course, life is going to throw a lot of stuff at you. It's just, I think about handling, handling these things with, with grace and uh, trying to remain in a beautiful state through it all. And what I mean by that is, I mean, there's never been a guarantee that it wouldn't be hard. It's just kind of, you know how they say, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, you mentioned my style. So I think my style, cause style is more than what you wear and things like right. that, kind of the manner in which you do things. So my style is try to handle things, you know, take it on the chin and try to just keep, you know, and I mean, I'm human. I do, I do falter sometimes. Well, I want to tell you this. So I posted on TikTok and other platforms because we get a lot of people after the show, right? And when I posted it, so many people, I'm going to tell you at least 20 people told me they've met you in Atlanta and you were so nice. You were so approachable because they expected, you know, they read, read her headlines and they listened to the gossip stuff. And when they approached you, you were so approachable and you were so doggone nice. And to me, I'm telling you, when I look at you, your outside matches your inside because you've been so warm and so gracious with your time and so good to me. And it's hard to find women like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep sisters like that. I'm going to keep her real. Okay. I because you're you're a celebrity, but you're not a celebrity, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, and I don't feel, you know, I always say I'm celebrity adjacent, right. you know, married into that life. And actually, I work in that world. You know, I'm working this weekend with Miss Patti LaBelle for the uh, BET Awards. And I do, I, I do still do a little bit of styling here and there, but I don't consider myself a celebrity. I married one. Um, you know, honestly, it's a lifestyle that, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be a celebrity. I'll tell you. How did you get your style? 
Like, how did you, how did that happen? I think that, uh, it started with my, you know, my book, I talk about my aunt and my grandmother. They both owned little retail boutiques when I was growing up and I worked in my aunt Sadie's store, excuse me, she's 99. So I get always flustered when I talk about her because I can't even believe. Aunt Sadie is 99. She's uh, planning to celebrate her 100th birthday, God willing, next February. And she's who really introduced style to me. She taught me about like, you know, fabrics and, you know, the textures and things like that. So that's how I learned what woolens were and alpaca wool. She'd say, honey, that suit is an alpaca wool suit. I, okay. So I learned the distinction of fabrics and, and the quality of things um, from working with Aunt Sadie. Okay. So speaking of style, what three things would you advise women that they should have in their closet? Well, definitely not a cut up t-shirt that you work out in like I have on right now. <laughs> no, but your staple, I would say. A you staple. Mm -hmm. a nice, you know, nice blazer that you can wear. You can dress up or down. I am a blazer queen. I love wearing black and I have a white blazer. And I wear it sometimes with jeans or if I'm, you know, want to dress it up, I'll throw on a pair of slacks or a skirt. I even wear it with my cut off shorts with heels. So I'd say definitely have a good blazer. Um, obviously great, great fitting jeans, you know, that way you can dress them up or down, like throw them with sneakers and, or, you know, again, with heels or with sandals, you know, flats, whatever your look is. Um, I always like to have a white, white dress shirt, like a, a nice crisp white dress shirt, you know, that's three things. God, but there's probably 30 things you need to have. <laughs> that's the three that I have off the top of my head. Sure. Tamika, how do you remain so, I, I, I like using this word, evanescence. You're always bubbly you're, and you've gone through some things. Can you please give us some advice? And the reason I'm asking that is because of what has happened in the last two years, we've all lost a lot of people. You obviously, tragically, you know, a child. How have you been able to bounce back, so to speak, or rejoin the world? You know, and I know you have other tr children, but how were you able to bounce back? Well, that's exactly how you just said it. Um, my other children are, are my purpose um, because I think if I if Kyle had been an only child, I probably wouldn't be here on this interview with you. I, you know, um, I was blessed to have more than one child, and I live for them, and I live you know through them. But now, you know, I've kind of dedicated, rededicated my life to all things I do professionally, um, even philanthropically, everything has Kyle. Kyle is kind of the head of every, at the helm of everything I do. He's very important. Um, he's still a very important part of my life, although he's not here. You know, posthumously, I'm, I'm working on an animated series in his honor. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. The Odd Life of Kyle Lyles. Hope to be on your television soon. I have a clothing line called Eli Kish, which is Kyle-ish. His name was Kyle Ishmael. So it's his name, like transpose the letters. And then I have the Kyle's World Foundation. So, so what's the website? So if someone wants to donate or find out more, what's the website? Um, kylesworld.org. And that's K-I, Kyle is K-I-L-E-S, world.org. Um, we are active. We do, we do work in Ghana now. We just expanded to Ghana where we're teaching American football and we're trying to do a whole STEM program in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So uh, we give back far more than we ever receive. Every donation we've got, I've matched it three times over, at least, you know. If someone donated, I don't know, $10, I'm definitely matching it with 20 or $30 every single time. Um, Tamika, what can we do to support you? We understand Kyle's world and I post, I have it on the screen for those, if you know, interested in, you know, because definitely to support that. But how else can we support you? Because you're a woman on a mission. You okay. on your hustle. You on your grind. I get tired of looking at your social media page. I'm beyond your Instagram page be popping. You're here. You're there. You're doing too much. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the book. Yes. Here I stand. Now this is a big deal. Um, here I stand is my memoir. I talk about my life. I talk about things I've been through, um, how I started in fashion, how I got my first client, um, going through you know two divorces in my life, losing a child, losing my mother, uh, losing my grandmother who I lived with for a long time. She she 
uh, passed away when I was about, I think I was about 23 when my grandmother passed. Um, the book tells you about facing life's obstacles and, you know, remaining in a beautiful state and just how I did it and how I do it. Cause it's, it's, a, it's I'm a work in progress. It's, it's a journey. It's never ending. Um, I can't say that I've resolved like my sadness or my grief. Come on, Kyle. I just posted something of him this morning. Um, I, I wake up sometimes in the morning in full tears just because I can't believe that that's one of the cards that life has dealt me is, you know, losing my son. Sometimes I just think it's surreal. I have to pinch myself because I'll say, am I talking about Kyle that's not here? You know what I mean? It's uh, it's really, it's, it's a surreal thing. So we're going to switch a little bit. Mm -hmm. You've been married. You said twice. Yeah. What's the most important, do you think, in a relationship to keep to, to, to keep it going, in your opinion? So you've been in a relationship. You're out of a relationship. You were married. So what would you think is the most important lesson? And what's the most, most important thing you think women should look for in a man? I think, well, if you're thinking about starting a family, and I think I've done really well in choosing men that really love their children and that are very responsible, despite the relationship or how it works mm -hmm. out. I I did a post for Father's Day to I you know, my ex-husband mm -hmm. on there, and they're both wonderful, wonderful fathers, you know, um, and they're probably wonderful mates. They just weren't a good match for me. But um, I think find men that really, you know, have great values as far as family goes. Um, the other thing I would tell a person who's embarking on a relationship is don't major in the minors. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it's a big deal <laughs> because you sometimes the little things you should let slide or you or or you just kind of pick your battles, in other words. And you know, that's what I I say also. I don't say don't major in the minors. I just say don't sweat the small stuff. Because when you look at the bigger picture, it's the bigger picture. This yeah. year we'll be married 34 years. Wow, congratulations. 34 years and girl, I know how he do it. Don't congratulate me, congratulate him because I wouldn't marry me, okay? Ooh, honey, I am not a, ooh I, ooh, I am a journey, honey. Ooh, Lord have mercy. I know how he does it, but he does it. But um, how important, because I always ask this question, how important is it that women support each other? So important. You know, I find in the, I don't know any other community because obviously I'm an African-American woman, but in African-American community, I don't think we are as support. We pretend to be supportive. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of women's empowerment things and we have things and people won't reach back and help bring another woman up. And I think we should do it more. I think we should be more proactive of fixing one another's crowns without um, pointing out that the crown is crooked. You know what I mean? Right. Without f finding flaws. I was laughing, just something as simple as being in traffic, trying to get over. And I'll see a sister in the car and I'll be like, hey, can I get over? And they just look like, mm, they drive up faster. I said, God, this is, it's just, we really, I think, I don't know, I don't even know what to, to attribute it to, but we do need to kind of uh, go into a more soft mode. A lot, of, a lot of us sisters need to get into a softer mode and kind of just be a little more loving. And I'm going to keep it real because for me, I hated women. I saw how they were around my brothers with each other. They were competing and I hated it. I said, I don't want to deal with women. I only want to work with men. I only want to be around men. Right. And something happened where the light bulb switched and God spoke to me. And that's how I, you know, have the company called Women Are Worthy. And now I, I fight all my male doctors and health caregivers, and I have nothing but women. And when I tell you I'm loving my sisters, and when I mean sisters, anyone with a vagina is a sister as far as I'm concerned, as long as you're positive. I can't deal with negative Nellies. You have to be positive Polly's. I don't care if you're white, black, as long as you're positive, you can become be a part of our tribe. So for me, it's important. And what I've trained my, or what I don't want to use the word train, what I've taught my interns one of the lessons I've taught them is and was whenever you see a woman, find three women a day that you don't know and give them a compliment. Don't give them a compliment if their teeth is crooked and you're like, oh, your teeth look cute. Not that phony kind of compliment, but a compliment, because sometimes this is the only compliment that they may ever receive for the day. 
So give them a compliment, particularly sisters, because because I've noticed when I do, especially in Atlanta, two things happen. I mean, their their shoulders go up. They're up when I approach them. Then it goes down when I give them a compliment or they think I'm picking them up. Right. So <laughs> but I hurt people hurt people. So usually what, what I've learned to do, I've channeled my into why people do what they do. So when I when I encounter women that aren't friendly or I'll tell you, I went into a restaurant the other day. This is about maybe two weekends ago. Walked into the restaurant. There was a table, two couples, black. They were all black. And this is a white establishment, ironically. But there were two. And the ladies, I kind of smiled at them, but they kind of looked back at me. Both of them did it. They looked kind of like, ugh, gave me a smug look. I'm like, dang, I don't know them. You know, I don't, maybe they knew who I was, whatever. I don't know. Maybe they're fans of my ex. I don't know. But it was a real nasty look. So as they were walking out, I made it a point. I said, I love your dress. You know, despite them being kind of rude and giving me the little, like, eh, gave me a nasty look, I complimented them. Then they just both lit up. Oh, thank you. Thank I said, see, they, they had a... a preconceived notion about who I was probably, or maybe they thought I was going to be just the nasty one. And I was all smiles and happy and had a mimosa on deck. <laughs> Great food. I was like, what's wrong? Yeah, you know what it is to be, let, let's, okay. I don't think there's anything wrong with a woman saying that she, she knows she's pretty and she's pretty. There isn't anything wrong with that at all. Unfortunately, in our community, when a woman is pretty, Pretty. And I, I don't know about all women. I can just speak about the African-American community. Mm -hmm. When one of us, when we're pretty, <clears throat> women perceive that you're going to be a certain way, right? And what I do when I see a woman that's gorgeous, pretty, beautiful, I'll walk up to her and say, girl, your hair is gorgeous. Who's your hairdresser? I'm not going to ask you to weave. You'll tell me whether it is or not. That's not my concern. Or how did you get, my God, your waist is so small. How did you get it so small? It's gorgeous. I think that's what we need to do more of instead of, girl, she thinks she cute. Look at her hair. It's probably not hers. Her waist, she probably had nips and tucks. We got to stop coming at, at each other like that, complimenting and asking the question, like, how did you accomplish this? How are you, what's your eating habits? That's what I think we need to do as women. But sometimes we just miss the mark by not doing it, Tamika. Hurt people hurt people. So usually if you're going through a personal security or you're not, you don't feel good about yourself, or maybe you think your man's going to look over at her. So you got attitude ahead of time and, and you don't realize that you're really just projecting, you're projecting your insecurities onto that person. So we just, have, yeah, I think as black women, we need to get together and uh, just be a little warmer and know that everybody's going through something and every everybody has insecurities about things. You may think, oh, you're always stylish and you're always this. And I may, like today, I know I look like a bum. I have running errands all day. I got cargo pants and a little cutoff t-shirt. I'm not dressed, but that's what I'm saying. So just know that hurt do hurt people and they really it's, it's that's a real thing so i have a young lady on the live that she lost her son and i know she's on here because of what you've gone through can you give her some advice please because i know she really needs that um i would say just to take it one day at a time there is no um you know no one can teach you how to grieve um, it is definitely a process you have to go through. And, and I will say time makes it a little more powerful. You never get over it, but you learn to live through it. You don't ever miraculously get over losing a child. You know, that's like one of the toughest. In fact, I think it's probably the toughest thing you can ever endure because, you know, we're not meant to bury our children. They're supposed to bury us, you know, as parents. Um, so I would just tell her, please just keep her head up and just... And you know what I didn't do? I'll say, I never erased his memory. I never hid all his pictures and things like that. Although I did, I packed up his room, like his belongings. I couldn't like stand walking through my house and seeing his shoes and like reminders like that. But I keep his memory alive and I keep him in conversation. And I, you know, like I said, I just posted a video that I found last night and it, it tore me up the video but I, I want people to see who my Kyle was and, you know, how lively he was. I'm really sorry for her loss. So am I for both of you. Thank now, you. here's the thing we need to ask 
people such as yourself and the uh, other young lady. What, what should we do? Because sometimes we don't know what to say when a parent has lost a child. Mm -hmm. And we, we come to the funeral, we do all of that, then we disappear because we're like, we don't know what to say, what to do. Yeah. What advice, can you give us three advices? Because I'm noticing I, that's a trend that's going on. Yeah, I would say don't disappear because you know during the planning of the funeral and the service, all that, that's when all the family is around. That's when all the food is being brought over. That's when everybody is in your face, you know, and it's busy. You know, everybody's dressed up in their nice dresses and they come to the ceremony and they they give their condolences. But it's, I'd say, the week after the funeral and beyond is when you really need the people. You know, that's when it gets quiet, definitely quiet. So just stay, you know, stay in touch and make sure you're still knowing that this parent is still grieving. Um, and... Um, what would I say? Just check on them. You know, you know, check on them. Don't assume they're strong just because they look strong. Check on your strong friends and family. Um, and don't, don't be a stranger. I know you don't know what to do or say, but just sometimes just, hey, I'm here. If you want to talk, how you feeling today? You know, just easy question. You know, hey, I'm here. I'm an ear for you. Good morning. How'd you sleep? You know, just check in on the person. Just mm -hmm. yeah, be a little more attentive. So Tamika, what chapter of this is in your, what, what chapter of, of this are you in your life? What's the name and what do you call this chapter? Hmm. I don't know. I've been watching your Instagram. I've been seeing you on them boats, honey. I've been watching you. <laughs> Fight it to a lot. Like people like my energy around because I love yeah. to dance. Anytime you got a friend that loves to dance, they want her there because they know she's going to cut up. She going to cut up no matter what. <laughs> So um, I'm really having a good time. You know, I've been I've been uh, a mother, you know, since I was 19 years old. So I've always had a stroller and a diaper bag and a breastfeeding kit and a this and a that and a pump. And a, <laughs> I've always been that. And so now my boys are older. Um, they spend a lot of time with their dad. You know, we, we share the time, but they they love being with their dad. And I love that they love to be with their dad. So I am really enjoying myself. I'm single. Um, I'm just, I'm having a great time. I'm having a social time. I'm creating some really cool stuff. I'm working on my podcast. Um, I'm finishing up my audio book. It's almost done. In fact, all the recording is done. Now we're just editing, you know, I have to mm -hmm. go back and listen to all eight and a half hours to listen for the little, the little glitches in my voice and stuff. I narrated my own audio book. Um, so for those who don't like to read, you know, they don't want to read the manuscript, they can just put it in their car, put it in their headphones at the gym, or while they're cleaning, put it through their speaker and just hear me talk them to death. <laughs> okay, so Oprah just called and said, hey, Jackie, can you, uh, we're going to do a movie about Tamika, and we need to cast someone. Can you please ask her, who would she like to play her in a movie? I think Physically, I would want Tika Sumter. Yes, I was thinking that. Yes, Tika Sumter's good. I, I like her anyway, but I think we kind of look similar sometimes. And if we could find my girl Whitney Houston, oh, I wish she could come and be the voice. <laughs> <laughs> but Sumter would be great. It would be yeah, she would be really great. Okay, so let's talk about the entrepreneurship. What's the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur? No, I don't even know. Not hard. What's challenging? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, getting support for your, you know, what you're working on. Because one thing you know is that people will support things that they know. Um, like people will go and spend their last money on a pair of Gucci sneakers. They, you know, give all nine hundred dollars or whatever they cost. I don't even know, but nine hundred dollars worth of Gucci sneakers. But they won't come and buy your two hundred dollar. And that's a little heartening. I think we should support, if you could just get 10% of the population to support small business, mm -hmm. the business could actually make it mm -hmm. and actually, you know, live to see another day. So I feel that that's a, a huge thing is that we don't support small businesses enough. It's hard. Like I'm, I'm a self-published author. I didn't have a publishing house. I didn't have a, a sponsor or, uh, you know, or anything like that. And same with my clothing line, Eli Kish. 
that those samples, the designs, the the cutting, the everything you see, and, and the stock and all of that is all self-funded by myself. Same with my nonprofit organization, Kyle's World. We don't have grants or funding from the government, or you know, we don't get any um, huge endowments of money. So all that stuff. When you see me do a camp in Africa, you got to know I have six plane tickets for our our crew to go over there and help the kids. I bought. 500 t-shirts i bought meals for everybody i bought all the bottled waters like i'm physically paying for this stuff so when we ask for donations it's great if people even if they only have 20 dollars or five dollars just if, imagine if you can get fifty thousand people to give you five dollars <laughs> you know what i mean people just won't even buy they don't budge they just getting a uh, guess not their well, well this is a great cause so i want people to go out and the fact that she's a minority, she's a woman, she's self-published. Please go out and get her book, Here I Stand. You've got to get her book. And Here I Stand, and that's my memoir. It talks about my life, but it also gives tips on how to navigate through just obstacles that you'll, you know, that you'll encounter. And there's also lessons. Like, I don't paint myself to be a perfect person in this book at all. I take a lot of accountability for mistakes, my attitude, the way that I approach different things in my life. And then I also have white bras and 101 style faux pas. And white bras is hilarious. It's a guide that tells you kind of fashion do's and don'ts, like things that people do that are egregious and uh, things you shouldn't do. And I, I, it's very humorous, it's a funny book. Well, I wasn't be, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful when I looked down. What I was doing is actually writing down white bras because I'm gonna get white bras. I'm gonna buy that, okay? White Available on Amazon. I don't think it's on my website right now because we're revamping TamikaRaymond.com. But for uh, here I stand, you can go on TamikaRaymond.com okay. and you can sit there. But White Bras is available on Amazon. I want to read the, how hilarious that is. Oh, we're definitely going to support both your books, I, definitely. Is and weeds and bad. <laughs> uh, I talk about all kinds of elements of style and and things you shouldn't do when you're on an airplane, just etiquette and things like that. So it's, it's about, again, style is not just what you wear. Mm -hmm. It's your etiquette. It's how you, it's the manner in which you do things. If you walk into a restaurant and you loud, JJ, hey, that's bad. That's, that's a faux pas. You know what I mean? That's etiquette of how you enter a room, how you sit, bringing food on the plane, knowing you got some hot Punjabi stinky food. It might be something with a whole bunch of aroma. And the person next to you is like, I don't want to smell that. I don't want to smell curry right now. Or I don't want to smell jerk sauce right now. So something that's rude, it's kind of, it's, it's poor taste sometimes. Right, right. And, and then the other person wants to curse them out because they're like this, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. When you just shut it down, apologize and zip it, you know? Yeah. Think about, you just have to be more courteous about people around you. And I think that's something that, especially in our culture, a lot of times we lack is kind of, you know, thinking about the other person. I'm cool. Okay, Tamika, so now we need to know, what are you looking for in a man? I'm not looking for a man. Um, Cause I, you know, I've been married twice. So I've kind of been there, done that and got the t-shirt already. <laughs> that's probably what I kept. I got <laughs> but um, I'm not looking for a man. But if one should find me, hopefully they are. Um, they have a great uh, spiritual foundation. You know, I want them to be believe in something other than themselves. Mm. If they don't have anybody that's holding them or other being that's holding them accountable. Then they won't treat me right. Um, I want them to be secure with themselves and financially secure. I don't want to take care of anybody's child, nobody's son, except my own. <laughs> I don't want to take care of nobody's So son. wait a minute, y'all. She ain't trying to be a cougar or a sugar mom. No, she's not trying to be a sugar mom. I'm not going to say she ain't trying to be a sugar mom, I, okay? Either. I mean, I, I have dated and married younger, but that's not like something I'm looking for. Like, ooh, where's the name? Right. It just I, happened. Yeah, I'm not a predator. <laughs> I'm not a predator. But um. And to be fair, I married a man that was younger, but he is a very old soul. If you knew him inside and out, he's older than I am probably inside. But um, what would I say? Somebody who likes to travel, someone that's well-spoken and cultured, you know, I want them to know hopefully a little bit about fashion because that is something I do have a passion for. 
And like I said, be God fearing. Oh, and I'd like for him to be six feet or better. Six feet, okay. Six feet or better, okay. I mean, these are, we know you're not looking, but just in the event, you know, when I'm marketing this show and guys are looking, I'm like, wow, she's gorgeous. I want them to hear. Don't holler if you can't pass these requirements, y'all. Okay, don't come to her with, with some baby mama drama, okay? Because okay. I'm, I'm the gatekeeper right now. No baby mama drama, have good credit, okay? Be spiritual. Okay, treat her like a lady, a queen that she is, and she'll treat you like a king. Are y'all listening to me? This is what that's what I said. So <laughs> and your mouth to God. <laughs> amen. Amen. Well, I know you're you're doing some things out there and you're there with Miss Patty. We normally do longer, but I, I you know, I want to thank you for your time. And you've just been amazing. And again, I knew you were a cool chick. I knew you were a cool chick. So Thank said, so done. And just, it was just so happy to hear other people say that. Like, yeah, I met her in a restaurant. I met her. I was in the bathroom. She was in the bathroom. I'm like, you really approached her while she was in the bathroom. Yes, I did. And she was cordial. She was very nice. And, and you know, so many. I don't know anyone really that when I put this out, had a bad word to say about you. Thank you. You know, I have not had that. So, and I'm usually good with my intuition about people. And then when Miss Patty was basically threatening people, you know, how that you, you I knew right then and there, you not even go there with you. Okay. When she threatened a couple of years about you, like, okay, got you, got it. So we want to thank you for tuning into the Women Are Worthy Network. For those of you, please, if you want to join our tribe, you must subscribe. And again, Tamika, have a wonderful time out there. We can't wait for you to get back to Atlanta. So, and again, please tell the police officers not to arrest me. Call off what you have on me. I am the stalker. I'm admitting it now. Okay. I'm admitting it now. <laughs> Do you have any any um any jewels you'd like to drop before we sign off? Um, I any parting words? No, I to say always remain in a beautiful state and just like i said life will happen things will happen it's really your attitude um and i think that really determines you know how how the universe and how god will start to fix things in your life you got to have the, the right attitude for it amen and may god continue to bless you keep you and multiply whatever you touch okay your weapons will form but they ain't gonna prosper because your soul is really cool i'm just digging you my sister thank you okay so you have a good day and everyone thank you for tuning in see you next time thank you bye bye-bye